Hey, what's up everybody? It's Izzy from Power Looking to Win, and in today's program review, we're going to be tackling Jim Wendler's iconic 531 system. Now, before I begin, it's extremely important to note that 531 is not a generic cookie cutter program that you can easily analyze. Through his different book publications, including the original 531, 531 for powerlifting, and beyond 531, Jim Wendler has produced well over 500 pages of content regarding the 531 system. In these books, Wendler offers quite literally several dozen different versions of 531 that address a variety of goals, from improving conditioning, getting faster and jumping higher, improving general strength, and yes, setting PRs on the big three for powerlifting purposes. Please understand that it would be virtually impossible to offer a comprehensive review of every single variation of 531 in a single review. Unless you guys want to read a 10,000 word article or watch a 4 hour video, I'm going to have to stick to the basic popular version of 531 that's floating around the internet. Whenever possible, as I'm addressing the original 531 program, I'm going to make notations about revisions Jim has made in the more current book, Beyond 531. Keep in mind that the original 531 was published 5 years ago in 2009. Wendler has made substantial changes and, in my opinion, improvements to that original template. Nonetheless, most people still use the original variation and our review is going to center upon that particular version of 531. That said, I'd strongly recommend that you consider picking up a copy of Beyond 531 if you're interested in doing any variation of the program. The book contains Wendler's latest and greatest ideas with regards to 531. If you're not familiar with first set, last, or joker sets, your knowledge base on 531 is out of date. Without understanding of these concepts, which are discussed in Beyond 531, you're not actually doing Wendler's current program. As always, we're going to start off with a bit of context about the origins of 531 program. Ironically, given its popularity in the powerlifting community, 531 was the program Jim Wendler invented when he decided to move away from the sport. That's right, Jim Wendler invented 531 when he quit powerlifting. In his own words, more or less, Wendler was tired of being a fat ass who wasn't good for anything besides waddling up to a monolift and doing a squat. He claims he was so out of shape that he actually lost his breath just walking around the block. As such, he wanted to come up with a program that took a more holistic approach to strength. He wanted to incorporate conditioning and mobility into his overall plan of attack. Wendler decided to strip away the complexities of the west side style that he was using, and he reverted to a simple percentage based program. In all likelihood, 531 was probably influenced by the bigger, stronger, faster lifting program that Wendler was almost certainly exposed to as a youth football player. This program, designed with a competitive athlete in mind, served as a fantastic framework for someone looking to improve their overall condition rather than focus explicitly on powerlifting performance. To make my point explicitly clear, Wendler's original program was specifically designed as an alternative to powerlifting training. 531 was never intended to be a powerlifting centric, powerlifting specific program. You must keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the bones of 531. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the original 531 program. So as you can see, 531 is a program with a monthly mesocycle. There are four distinct microcycles, the 3x5 plus week, the 3x3 plus week, the, five, the 531 plus week, and then the deload week. The key notation to make here is that the plus sets mean you do as many reps as possible on the last set of the workout. You're not supposed to go to failure on these plus sets, also known as AMRAP sets or as many reps as possible, but you are supposed to come within a rep or two of failure. The entire program centers around the concept of the training max. Essentially using a rep max calculator, you estimate your true one rep max, then you multiply this number by 90% in order to find your training max, and using this training max, all of your work set weights are calculated based on the percentages that I just showed you. At the end of each month, you increase your training max weight on the lower body movements, the squat and the deadlift, by 10 pounds. You increase your training max on the upper body movements, the bench and the press, by 5 pounds. From there, you repeat the exact same workouts that you did the month before with slightly heavier weights. In addition to the monthly incremental increases, the program also allows for rep maxes. So even if the weight increases are only monthly, you can still theoretically make progress from week to week by adding reps. Although the original 531 program was never intended for powerlifters, Wendler has since addressed this issue in both 531 for powerlifting and beyond 531. 
In Beyond 531, Wendler offers an 11 to 12 week meat peaking cycle. Here's what it looks like. All right guys, here, here's Wendler's 12 week peaking plan. As you can see, the peaking plan is relatively simple and effective. In the first month, the lifter increases specificity by adding some heavy singles using his training max weight after he does his AMRAP set. In month two though, the lifter starts using his training max weight as the AMRAP set. And in month three, you cut out all AMRAP sets and you add an additional super heavy single. Not only that, but during the last month, by eliminating the AMRAP sets, you allow for an extended recovery period where fatigue dissipates. By still including the ultra heavy single, you prevent detraining and encourage further acclimation to heavy weights. By the way, in week 11, you cut out all assistance exercises as well, so you ensure full recovery going into meet week in week 12. Overall, this is a solid peaking option for the lifter who is using 531. In Beyond 531, Wendler offers a half year full training program that includes periodized focuses on hypertrophy, conditioning, and strength. However, the original 531 template is now what you would consider periodized. Unlike the other programs we've looked at thus far, the 531 program does feature a monthly mesocycle with once monthly weight increases. In reality, this makes the program most suited for advanced intermediate athletes. Early intermediates can progress much more quickly than once per month, and even though 531 allows for rep maxes, it is much harder to add one rep per week than it is to add anywhere between 2 to 5 pounds or 1 to 2 kgs per week. One of the biggest criticisms of 531 is the lack of overall frequency for the power lifts. You perform each lift only once per week. For the vast majority of trainees, this simply isn't optimal in terms of technical development. You're going to need more weekly exposures to the lift in order to master your technique. Now there are a variety of 531 templates that function to increase frequency. For powerlifting purposes where technique is paramount, I think it is necessary to choose one of them. You can find many such examples in Beyond 531. In my opinion, getting your squat and bench frequency to at least twice per week is going to be the minimum acceptable level. I personally prefer to see benching happening at at least three times a week and even twice weekly deadlifting but many people do just fine with benching twice a week and pulling only once. If you're going to do 531 for powerlifting, make sure that you use a variation where the frequency is increased. I think you know what I'm going to say here. The program isn't specific enough because it wasn't designed explicitly for powerlifting. The entire idea behind 531 was to move away from powerlifting centric training and focus on a more holistic approach to strength. The entire program is designed to allow for more conditioning, more overall recovery, and a better general sense of well-being. These goals and aims are all well and good, but many run contradictory to maximizing powerlifting performance. Like many other programs we've seen, the emphasis on the 1 to 1 bench to press ratio is just unnecessary and suboptimal for powerlifters. The vast majority of upper body training needs to be focused on the bench press. The biggest failing of 5 through 1, in terms of specificity, is the percentages used by the program. Let's do some math here. If we're taking 90% of our true max as the base for our program, and then taking 85% of that number in week one, 90% of that number in week two, 95% of that number in week three, our actual percentages are closer to 75%, 80%, and 85%. In other words, for the vast majority of the months that you spend doing 531, you spend exactly one week at or above 85% of your true max. For a power lifter, this is an absolutely horrible approach. Now I'm not saying you won't get any stronger from working at lighter percentages, but I am saying that spending so little time in the power lifter's money range, like 80 to 90%, is a recipe for suboptimal progress. The lighter percentages, while great for the long-term sustained progress on the program, completely bias it towards hypertrophy and away from strength. It isn't that uncommon for people to get five to eight reps on their five through one week, which is supposed to be the heavy week. Look, if you want to lift heavy stuff, you have to lift heavy stuff. It's really that simple. In fact, if we're being honest, even Wendler has recognized that this was a weakness of his program for powerlifters. He addresses this weakness in 531 for powerlifting through the following adjustment to the program. Here's the basic 5 through 1 for powerlifting program. The main changes to note here is that weeks 1 and 2 are actually switched around. So instead of doing the 5 plus week first, you actually do the 3 plus week first. And in the 3 plus week and the 5 through 1 plus week, you do heavy singles at 100% of your training max. Not only that, but the AMRAP set is removed 
from the five plus week. So in week two, you don't do any AMRAPs. But in weeks one and three, you do your AMRAP and then a super heavy single right after that. Now this is a good start towards improving specificity. But let's be honest here, do you really think that doing a couple of singles, which represents a relatively small amount of volume, is enough to override the fact that the vast majority of work you do on the program is below 85%? Well, it isn't. And beyond 531, Wendler further addresses this deficiency with the addition of joker sets. With joker sets, you can keep working up to heavier and heavier work sets after your AMRAP. For example, after you go for your rep max on 3x3 week, you can keep doing heavier triples. You're supposed to listen to your body and stop before you go to a weight where you would fail. In other words, you're supposed to incorporate auto-regulation, but you're not really given any guidance as to how to actually do that. Beyond that oversight, the joker sets do at least allow for you to get some work done in that 85% range. This is a key addition for all powerlifters. You can read more about joker sets in Beyond 531. 531 employs a combination of basic progressive overload and attempting to add more reps. On the one hand, you increase your training max by a fixed linear increment every single month. This results in heavier poundages being used over time, also known as progressive overload. However, you also push yourself to new limits with the rep max sets. By going for new rep PRs, you introduce another element of progression. This unique combination is one of the more intelligent and useful aspects of 531, in my opinion. While there are certainly programs out there that go way too far with how much volume and frequency they prescribe, the original 531 program actually goes in the opposite direction in my opinion. The original 531 contains too little overall volume and features unnecessarily frequent deloads. In terms of volume, you're only doing three work sets per week on each lift. The rest of the volume comes from assistance movements. Now I can already hear many of you saying, but I do the boring but big template. The Boring But Big 531 template features assistance work where you take 50% of your training max on the, big th on the big movements and then perform them for 5 sets of 10 reps. Now this does indeed increase the volume, but for powerlifting purposes, how useful do you think it is doing 5 sets of 10 at less than 50% of your real training max? Well, it isn't useful at all. Remember the name, Boring But Big. The template is explicitly aimed at hypertrophy. Even Wendler seems to agree with this idea. In Beyond 531, Wendler has introduced a new concept called First Set Last, where you repeat your first work set of the day for another AMRAP set. Wendler now recommends this as the standard addition to the 531 program. I think that speaks for itself. Wendler himself has found that adding more volume to the original 531 program is a good idea. Even so, for powerlifting purposes, we'd like to see more of the volume come at 80 to 85 percent rather than just doing more additional sets at 70 to 75 percent. Similarly, deloading every fourth week means that you spend a quarter of the training year not actually training. Unless you're absolutely killing yourself in those three working weeks, deloading that frequently is just completely unnecessary. And as we've already established, the original 5-3-1 program, if anything, is light on the volume. So the deloads are even more wasteful. Again, Wendler seems to have come to this conclusion himself, and beyond 531, he is now recommending that you do two full cycles before deloading. So you now train six straight weeks before you do each deload. It looks like this. So as you can see, this is really straightforward. All you're doing is two full cycles of the 531 method. So you do a, a week at plus five, a week at plus three, a week at plus one. Then you add to your training maxes in week four, you do another plus five week, another plus three week, another one plus week before you finally do your first deload. Real simple stuff, just two cycles and then you deload instead of deloading after every cycle. When combined with the joker sets and first set last set additions, this makes a ton of sense and dramatically improves the overall quality of the program. If you're interested in 531 and you don't consult Beyond 531 for ideas on how to improve your template, I just don't personally believe that you're going to make the same level of gains as you otherwise would. Compared to the other programs we've looked at thus far, Wendler is extremely progressive in his use of auto-regulation. In the original program, the AMRAP sets allow you to make progress at your own pace. The AMRAP set allows you to take advantage of good days and bad days. On good days, you'll smash some rep PRs. On bad days, you won't. It doesn't matter either way because as long as you get the minimum reps, you haven't stalled. You can live on to fight again the next week. Wendler takes this even further with the idea of joker sets. Joker sets are essentially the same thing as setting an initial in Mike Teixeira's reactive training systems. Rather than predetermining your top set of the day, you simply work up to a top set. 
Again, this allows the lifter to auto-regulate their heaviest training loads of the day. Now, the original 531 program doesn't auto-regulate volume beyond the AMRAP set. And that's a major fault, considering that this is a program aimed at advanced intermediates. However, in Beyond 531, Wendler does provide a few templates where advanced lifters are encouraged to auto-regulate assistance volume and even have given a few ideas about how to do it. Again, compared to other programs, Wendler is well ahead of the curve here. However, unlike Toshiro's reactive training systems, Wendler hasn't yet figured out how to systematize auto-regulation so that anyone can use it. Throughout Beyond 531, he simply mentions that he cannot teach you to listen to your body. You have to learn on your own. Teixeira's system proves that this isn't necessarily true. Teixeira has developed a system for teaching you to do this. Nonetheless, you can't criticize Wendler's newest versions of 531 for ignoring individual differences. If anything, I haven't yet come across a resource that addresses so many different and varied goals and demographics. In Beyond 531, you're very likely to find a program that is specifically tailored to your level of advancement and goals. The only issue is that there are so many different templates and variations that the entire thing is somewhat of a jumbled mess. You have to sort it out for yourself. Admittedly, I'm not a fan of the original 531 program. I don't think it contains enough frequency, enough volume, and I don't think it has you handling heavy enough weights often enough. I think it calls for deloads too frequently, and it just generally isn't specific to powerlifting. However, with Beyond 531, Wendler does a good job of giving the lifter a variety of tools to address virtually all of these deficiencies. The main criticisms that remain, at least for me, is that he doesn't provide a way to systematize the auto-regulation provided by joker sets and the overall volume done on assistance work. If you want the ideal 531 program for powerlifting, you're not going to find it right in the book. You're going to have to do a lot of thinking for yourself, you're going to have to read all of his principles, bring it together, and create something coherent all on your own. Now I don't want to leave you guys on that note, so I'd like to give you a recommendation of my own for how you could possibly set up Wendler's 531 program for the best effect. Now my goal here is to stay completely true to Wendler's ideas, so I don't think this program is necessarily optimal, I just think it's a great way to set up 531 for a power look. Remember, I still prefer at least three upper body sessions a week, and I prefer the volume to be auto-regulated. Again though, I just want to give you guys an idea of a decent starting point for a 5 through one powerlifting template. Here's what it looks like. Here's the powerlifting to win version of 5 three, one Now let's note the key points here. First of all, you're doing two cycles before every deload. This means you get in a solid six weeks of training before taking that off week. You're also using joker sets, which means your top sets of the day are going to be auto-regulated and they'll be much heavier than the original 531 top sets. This is going to increase specificity to powerlifting. Additionally, the 5 plus week and the 3 plus week are swapped. This means you never have two heavy weeks in a row. In weeks one and three, you're going to use the boring but big variation where you do five by three at 90% of your training max. This allows for more volume at heavier weights and thus makes the program more specific to powerlifting. You'll notice that on the three by five week, you don't do AMRAPs and you use the five by five boring but big variation. This week serves as a break from the heavy loads, which means it's a bit of periodization and it's a great way to keep the volume high without resorting to the extremely light and practically pointless 5x10 boring but big variation. Again, I don't think this is an optimal powerlifting routine or necessarily even the best way to use 5 through one for powerlifting. I just wanted to give you guys a good solid starting point for designing a more specific 5 through one template if you're just one of those people who really loves 5 through one and wants to use the concept for whatever reason. Overall, 5 through one is a solid choice for those of you out there who can no longer make progress on the simpler intermediate programs such as the Texas method. By making some of the modifications we've talked about in this video, you'll be well on your way to a 5 through one variant that is more specific to powerlifting and thus more conducive to improving your maximal strength. Next up in the program queue is going to be Brandon Lilly's The Cube Method. I am excited to take a deeper look into this one and analyze it for powerlifting to win. All this said, if you're seriously considering 531, I honestly believe that you're doing yourself a huge disservice if you don't pick up a copy of Beyond 531. The material in Beyond 531 will help you improve the original 531 program by leaps and bounds. Wendler's current 531 version is just so much better than the original. While I don't consider Beyond 531 must-read material for the average powerlifter, if 531 really appeals to you personally, you need to grab a copy and give it a read.
As always guys, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to visit the Power Lifting to Win forums. If you visit the forums there and sign up, I can address and answer all of your questions personally. I did re-enable the YouTube comments, so you guys can leave comments here, but I have to be honest with you, I'm not going to be reading them going forward. There's just too many for me to handle. If you guys found this content interesting, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, subscribe, and send it out in the interwebs for me. Subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out powerliftingtowin.com for more great powerlifting information. Have a nice day.